Happy Friday, my math party people. Hopefully you had a good 4th of July, but let's go ahead and get right back to Ace and the Azbab. We have two back-to-back -back questions here on unit conversion, word problems. So with that said, give this one a shot. I'm about to start this in three, two, and... All right, let's go. So first things first, as always, my party people, the first thing we do, read that question. So we're gonna go straight over here. How much will it cost to ship this package? Booyah, right there. So again, the first step isn't about trying to get everything together. No, no, no. First step is just in terms of the story, what is it that we're trying to do? What are we trying to accomplish here? So in terms of the story, how much will it cost to ship the item? Well, that's pretty clear. It'll cost blank dollars to ship. Booyah. Now, what we need to do from here is understand the factors associated with the cost of shipping this item. So what we'll do is we'll go straight up here to the top and start reading the information, asking ourselves, whenever we see a value or a relationship presented, how does that affect what we're trying to do? So here, a small business owner needs to ship a package containing handmade crafts. The package weighs three pounds, 14 ounces. The shipping company charges $2.50 for the first pound and 75 cents for each additional ounce. All right, sounds good. So we have the information we need. Let's go ahead and write it out so we understand what's going on. So number one, right over here, I'll go ahead and say we have the weight of the package, three pounds, 14 ounces. So we'll have that right there nice and easy. Booyah. And then up next, what we're going to say is, well, what does this mean here? The shipping company charges $2.50 for the first pound and then 75 cents for each additional ounce. Well, that's pretty clear there. What that means is, hey, your first pound, right over here, that's gonna be $2.50. That's the first pound. The remaining weight that we have, each ounce that we have over a pound, we're charging again, 75 cents for each additional ounce. So we need to understand how many extra ounces we actually have? I know on the front, you know, on the surface, it's pretty easy to say, okay, first pound is 250. So if we take away a pound, now we have two pounds, 14 ounces left. That should be pretty clear there. But remember, we are being charged 75 cents. Let me highlight this very clearly here. 75 cents for each additional ounce. So we need to turn that additional, that extra two pounds, 14 ounces into just ounces because that'll help us calculate that total. So let's go ahead and do that. How many ounces are in a pound? That's gonna be 16. So each pound that we have, we can break it down into 16 ounces. So two pounds, that's 16 times two, which would be 32 ounces. Again, the conversion is one pound, equals 16 ounces. So two pounds would be 32 ounces. Multiply that by two. And then we still have the 14 ounces from before. So we add that together. And that's gonna be 46 ounces extra. So this is what's gonna be subject to the 75 cents per ounce. Boom. So now all we have to do, my party people, the last step is really gonna be right here. Take the 46 extra ounces and multiply that by 75 cents per ounce. So let's go ahead and figure that out and have ourselves a good time. I'm gonna take this top piece right over here. Let's make that a lot smaller. So that way we can calculate all of this nice and easy. So let's go ahead and get to work. Six times five, that's gonna be 30. Carry the three. Four multiplied by five is gonna be 20. Carry the three is gonna be 23. Then we're gonna drop a zero to start working with that seven. So we're gonna have four times, or excuse me, six times seven. That's gonna be 42. Carry that four. Then four times seven is 28. Carry the four is 32. So boom, we got all that going on. We have zero, five, four, and three. And then the last thing we need to do is when we're multiplying by decimals, we'll bring back the total number of decimals. So that'll be $34 and 50 cents. Now this is where a lot of people might get confused. A lot of people might look at that and say, okay coach, 34.50, 
Hey, that's A. No, <laughs> no, that's not gonna be it because we forgot that remember the first pound, that's gonna be $2.50. So we'll go ahead and do that. We'll add $2.50 again, cause that represented the first pound. That was the charge for it. So once we have that, now we're good. Zero, five plus five is 10, carry the one. Four plus two is six, carry the one is seven. And there it is, $37 even. That's gonna be the final cost to ship this item. And there it is. So unit conversion word problem. Notice that we just had to go ahead and multiply and then add back, but we had to convert right there in the middle. And that's how these word problems are really configured. You have got to be able to understand that unit conversion is part of the solution. It's not the only thing you need to do when you need to convert units. It's part of the bigger solution. So before we get started with the next question about party people, don't forget, I'm here to help you out. So if you want to learn more about getting thousands upon thousands of practice problems with video solutions and basically a program that's tailored to you and the way that you like to learn, then go ahead and reach out to me. There's my phone number right there, text only. Go ahead, text me, introduce yourself and say, hey coach, I'd like to learn more about your full program. That way I can put you in the best position to raise your score and get the job that you want. So with that said, my party people, here we go. Here's question number two. We're gonna try to get this one done pretty quickly. What's the total area of the room? Okay, that's pretty easy, right? Finding the area and we see that it says rectangular storage room. Cool, sounds good. But what's the twist? The twist is gonna be, all right, just making sure you had a chance to pause and figure it out yourself. But the twist is going to be that we need it in square inches. Hmm, what is it given to us as? It's actually gonna be given to us in feet and inches, feet and inches. Okay, that's a problem, because we know easily though that area is gonna be length times width for a rectangle. That's awesome. But the problem here is that it's given to us not just in inches, but in feet and inches. So we need to start off quickly here, the 12 feet, eight inches. Let's turn that into just inches. So how many inches are in each foot? 12. So 12 feet times 12 inches per foot is 144. Add the eight that was already there and we have ourselves 152 inches. So this is the length that I am going to be multiplying by. Now let's move forward with the width. With the width, what do we have? We have nine feet, three inches. How do we do that? Nine feet times 12 would be 108 inches plus the three inches that's right there. And that'll be 111 inches. Now that we have that there, now we're gonna be able to move forward and multiply these values together and get the area in square feet. So we'll go ahead and write this quickly out here. Feel free to pause the video as always. So we have, um, we're gonna go ahead and focus one at a time here. So two times one, five times one, one times one. Up next, we'll work here. So now we have two times one, five times one, one times one. And you notice it's not really that hard, right? And then lastly, so zero, zero, and then we'll have two times one, five times one, and one times one. Again, not too terrible. It's just understanding the process that we have to follow. That's the biggest part, the setup in general. So we add this together and we'll get two, seven, eight, six, one. And there it is, 16,872 square inches. And that is answer choice C. And there's your ASVAB prep of the day in less than 10 minutes. As always, my party people, make sure to like this video, comment on it if it helps you out. And don't forget to reach out to your coach Anderson if you need more ASVAB help. I've got plenty of help and I'm here to help you succeed. I'll see you guys in the next video. Cheers, everybody. A tasty ASVAB. Thanks for watching my ASVAB party people. But before you go, if you're here struggling to raise your score, memorizing videos on YouTube, it's not gonna do it. What you wanna do is join my full program. That way we can help you watch, practice, and master every single step of the way until you get the score you want. It's your career, take it seriously, and that's what I'm here to do. So with that said, my party people, go ahead, reach out to me. There's my phone number right there. Text me, ask me about the program, and I'll show you how to ace the ASVAB. See you soon, my party people. Let's get to it.